Back in the new improved cut, and we have with us. First of all, the ECMAs are in the air, and I can feel it. Yeah. The town is tingling, and we got one of Canada's finest in the building right now. It's Fortunato. Yes, sir. yes, yes. It's amazing feeling to be back here in Halifax. You know, East Coast Music Awards going on 2018. Fortunato. Oh, you said that right, like <laughs> movie, like. Fortunato. <laughs> Actually, the there, there's like one guy who does all those. You know what I mean? I there's like one guy. He's yeah. paid to. And I want that job. He's paid. <laughs> I really do. Like, this fall. <laughs> 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 it's always like that. <laughs> I just want to do that one particular lane of those. Yeah. That guy's got the pipes, though. That's a, that's what they, they used to tell me. They're like, you got the pipes, man. You should be in broadcasting. You do have a great voice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, just uh, trying to find my perfect like spot here. Sweet spot. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm think I'm good right here. Right there. Yeah, that's the spot. Once I once I can feel myself like I just close my eyes and be like, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> OK. Yeah. So d do you meditate? No. You know what? But they said you just went into this thing. There it was very like guru. -y, I felt like and not the rapper, but like uh, very. Uh, I felt like you were a cult leader for a second. I was getting into it. When I when I go on stage, I usually perform with my eyes closed, and I've I've never fallen off the stage yet. Knock on wood. Wait, but you know what? what? I've I've stepped back onto it like a speaker, what? like and things. But I'm always like pretty much completely blind when I'm up there. Really? Yeah. It's I and people have been like, no, nah, man, you got to connect with the crowd. Like you got to make eye contact. That's that's the connection. And I'm like. You know what? I've I've tried doing it, and then all of a sudden, the it slips away from me. You know, like really? so. Yeah, I keep my eyes closed almost like all the time. People are like, oh, wear sunglasses, and then they won't know that your eyes are closed. And I've done that a couple of times. I'm like, you know what? Do I see a lot of different performers, it? and they're like, they got their eyes closed too. So I mean, well, yeah. whatever improves the performance, you know. And people are just looking at me like, you know, sometimes people are there with their their fist up, and they're just like, hey, man. And I'm just I'm just wandering past them, you know. And you know what? I just just like yeah. I, I don't meditate though. Like I've heard uh, people say like oh for your for your astrological sign as a Libra, meditation You're is Libra. really important for you. Yeah. So like like that should be part of your life. And I keep saying man, I'm gonna start going to yoga and I'm gonna I'm gonna meditate and stuff, but not yet. And I feel like maybe that rapping and, and stuff is my my form of medication, medication and meditation. Damn. Yeah. I also think that'd be a really good video concept for you. I can just see it like you. It's very pastel -y and yeah. you're trying to do yoga and all this. Yeah. But meanwhile, you're just kind of spitting fires in the yoga class. Yeah. It's not working out. <laughs> <laughs> I see that I, like I, I usually I, I do weights and then I they, like at the YMCA where I work out like there's like uh, they're doing so the yoga in front of me. Right. So you can see them through the glass and then I see them with like their legs in the air and they're like pulling their ankles back and their butt, butts <laughs> in the air and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't, like, I'm sure I could pull it off if I really put my mind to it. But I would like I don't know if I could put on the spandex and stuff like, you know, like <laughs> I think I would. I get sore thinking about it. Yeah. Actually, it's bad. I mean, I guess once you start doing it and then you get into it, like you kind of shape your body and, and like it's more of a mental thing. But yeah, yeah for me, like it's I have a long way to go before I can do that. You know, have you ever played? Have you ever been an athlete of any kind? Have you are you a boxer by trade? No, no. People <laughs> have said that about me, but uh, like I've I I've like been I've been boxed <laughs> <You know? laughs> i've had to i have had to box without being formally trained but okay. I, you know but uh like uh yeah no it's i, I was in a hockey like big time you know i uh I, I really that was my first competitive you know thing it would taught me about like sportsmanship and teamwork and you know like putting the team first and stuff right, like right, that right. so it really taught me about like being humble and like you know learning how to pass and not get that goal or like staying back and playing defense just sure. so like help your goalie out don't let him don't hang him out to dry it's little things like that that you know kind of they carry you through your life little lessons like that so but yeah i've uh, i've always been into into weightlifting and stuff and so uh, on and off i do that quite a bit i like free weights and uh, cardio too you know my family's all been runners and stuff so even though i'm a big guy i can still go i can still like 
I can, uh, you know, I look like the Incredible Hulk, like kind of going down the street. But then, you know, like, I just was like, damn, he's still going. You know, and I'm like, I, I can run, you know. Like, he is uh, a superhero, right? Yeah. I mean, like, uh, and I'm like, not the fastest runner, but I can, I can, I can keep going. So like, nice. yeah. Uh, I want to jump into something that we like to do with people, and we call this segment First Cuts. Yeah. And uh, this is some of the firsts in your life, so, you know, hit us with, with these ones here. I want to know, if, do you remember some of your first rhymes? Yeah, I actually remember. Um, I feel like you would. I feel like you're the kind of person that would. Remember. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I, I remember the, the first track that I ever I ever put on uh, Hip Hop Canada, and uh, DJ Shaman, who was Mishy Me's DJ, mm -hmm. mixed it for me. And uh, it was on a Mob Deep track. What year is this? Uh, I think this is probably 2006, maybe 2000. Yeah, okay. 2006, 2007 at the latest. Cool. But it was called Too Hot, basically, right? And it was all about, you know, I was at my house and our air conditioner broke. And I was sitting there in the basement and like just sweat was just, you know, going down the sides of my body and stuff. And like, that's this just <laughs> like this really dope mob deep beat, you know, mm. I was like, dun, 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 dun. And, and it's like, it's like, it's like, I start the first, like, it's too hot. <laughs> and, you know, and it's like, that's what they screaming when we coming through, got the temperature rising, people sweating like the flu, something like that. You know, it's like, and the first verse was completely different than the second verse. Like, they were like, who spit that second verse? And I was like, that was me. <laughs> and like, yeah, it's completely different than the first, you know? And I was just like, and I've been doing that ever since. Like, I'll get, I'll write the first verse and I'll be like, I'll be like, yeah, I'm bored of that flow. I'm going to do something different. I'll spit the second one. So it'd be like, the you know, because I was in a group where there was two guys. Yeah. But then I do solo tracks and they'd yeah. be like, so who's the other guy? And I'd be like, that's still me, you know? <laughs> so like, that was like my first track, Too Hot. It was a Mob Deep dub uh, mixed by DJ Shaman. And uh, probably the first track that I ever put out publicly, like, uh, wow. you know, to say like, hey, and my name was Fortunato at the time and that's never changed. You've, have you always been always been Fortunato as a, in, in in rap or yeah. like before you became like officially Fortunato? You must have played around with some other name. I think Falmout was one Foul of them. Falmout, yeah. Falmout is that was... down your Yarmout? <laughs> you guys should be a tag team. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like it was, it was just like Falmout, F O W L, like, like almost like foul, like water foul, right, or whatever. I don't know. Not foul, like a like a foul ball, right? And so, like, yeah, that was that was one of my original. And I think I was also like uh, Joe Blow, aka Mister Nobody, which you know people kind of said like, "Yo, we we like that." Uh, later in my career, they said like, "You know, you should just be." Joe you know Blow. john doe like but there was a, was a like a john doe rapper and it's like yeah like basically that was a period of my you know my life where i was just like i'm no i'm nobody and i like i am just and uh you know you, the words come out and there's no one behind it right i didn't want an identity at the time basically right so yeah i think those are my two earliest things you know that I, that i did but for like most of my like everything was fortunato ever since then you right, know right right um, what was the first rap music you ever bought? Oh, first rap music I ever bought was um, was um, actually it was an Ice Cube album, and it was um, it was an EP. I think it was called Kill It Will. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like mostly like remixes and stuff. But I used to go to this record store called Tracks uh, at Young in College. And uh, I was going to school in near there and I had to catch a subway back to where I lived. And I, and I kind of went there and just kind of started looking around at stuff. And I I usually like I was heavy into like al alternative music at the time. So I was like always like, you know, looking for Depeche Mode albums and stuff like that. I was into like that kind of music. And then on the same side, I'd be like, oh, what's this Ice Cube Kill It Will? And I was like, huh. And there was one track on there like called Dead Homies, right? Like, you know, this was dedicated to my dead home he's you know, they kind of be kind of wrote in i was like i didn't i was like i'm not really feeling the rest of this album but i like that song so that's i started getting into hip-hop like just one song at a time then i like i bought this raw fusion album which was like uh you know these guys were like a part of uh, digital underground and i bought that album and i started getting into that album and i was like oh man you know so then i was like let me do my homework on these raw fusion guys and i went and started going back and it was like Oh, Digital Underground, Sex Packets. We started getting into that, you know, and then putting pieces Dollar together. Yeah, and then next thing you know, like, I was just, uh, I was completely just buying hip-hop music, you know, like, and that was it. It's just one track at a time. I'd be like, well, you know, I didn't feel bad that I bought an entire album and there was only, like, one track that I was feeling. In, my, in the beginning parts of hip-hop, I wasn't, like, 
I wasn't like so crazy about it that I would like, I was just like, you know, and then they start coming out with like, with like they already had them, but I started to discover cause singles and stuff like that. Yeah, you know? singles are dope. So I had like Tim Dog, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fuck Compton. Fuck Compton, you know, yeah. You get good remixes on the singles too. Yeah. Man. Tim Dog is hard as fuck. Yeah, so like that, like I'd find like little gems like that, you know, and then uh, and that's you know from there it just my collection went ridiculous after that point, nice. where I was like online on Tower Records, like getting import CD singles from like from all over the place, just like if it because after a point I'd be like, okay, I've listened to all this hip hop, I want to get like the instrumentals so that I can rap, you know, that was my evolution. I was like, I listened to it, I listened to it. So anything that had an instrumental on it, I was getting it. So I got just into singles. I was like, it didn't Ooh, even matter yeah, if right. it was like, I was rapping over Destiny Child CD single. Like it didn't matter. I had like that, yeah. I was like, I was just like, yeah. Like, no, 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 no. And like, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rap on this one too. And so like, I had some pretty interesting beats that I was rapping to. And then of course there was like the whole LimeWire, uh, you oh, know, thing. And I was just like, wire. yeah, I had like all these different applications that I was using. And I was just like, I even had dudes who had like FTP sites with their vinyl up on there. And I'd be like, I'd be like, okay, we were just trading online. And I'm like, I just want the instrumentals. I don't even need the whole 12. And she's like, okay, well, if that's the deal, then like we can, we can do business. Cause I was just collecting so that I could get more instrumentals and I was building up the instrumentals. And so wow. that's how, that's how it went. Just yeah, crazy. Nice. I was into the beats more than anything after a while, you know, but I mean like that's, that's, it started off with just a couple CD singles and stuff yeah. like that cassette singles, you know, who was the first MC that you like idolized? Or looked up to her, you know. Oh man, the first, the first, the first guy that I ever that I ever looked up to, like really, really hardcore, man. It's see, like it's it's weird because I ended up in a duo, and I was always about the duos, right? So another one of the first albums I got on CD from from tracks was uh, Helta Skelta, you know, uh, Nocturnal, and um, and I was just like, I didn't even know that it was. Sean Price or who was on there like there was two dudes in really cool Helly Hansen jackets one yeah. had the red and green with yeah. the one, one guy's hanging upside down from the tree and I was just like and then they had a song called Crate Unknown on there and I was just like and it had a spooky be like I was like I was like whoa and then these guys it's like <laughs> like I was like whoa like this is <laughs> this is insane right so like I kind of like I didn't really know who they were but I kind of got into that and then of course like you know I listened to um uh, Boogie Monsters, you know, and so like Boogie Monsters like was kind of like I didn't even know how many dudes was were in that group. I just knew like they had crazy friggin, you know, rhymes that were like yeah. off the wall. And so like, yeah, a lot of my influences were very unconventional. And then, of course, Mob Deep, you know, like uh, Mob Deep was was one of the, the albums that, you know, I remember bumping on cassette and just being like I was on the bus and I was just listening to Shook One's part two. And it was just like non-stop you know like wow this is the most hardcore thing i didn't listen to juvenile hell like it was the before before my exposure to hip-hop you know right. but but when i got my hands on shook ones part two like i was just i couldn't get enough of it you know yeah. i was like wow prodigy his his timing was just so unique you know and the way that he could just like stop like he's not he's not i don't care about this beat you know i'm yeah. gonna do what i want i'm gonna say what i have to say and but basically i'm just going to be as as hard as fuck as as i'm saying it, you know and then and then like just the way that he just tell people like that they're pussies and like you you're, you know I, you, this is what i'm going to do to you and and it doesn't even matter cuz you're not shit you know and this is my crew when we come after you then it's over like right. cuz you're you're a squid and this and that like the way that he would elaborate on that i'm like yo this guy's like He's one of the most cutthroat people I've ever heard so, on the microphone. So young too. Like, yeah. Even at that point. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, how the hell, how did he like get this level of maturity? But then, you know, I started to, to learn about like the whole story, you know, behind Queensbridge projects and, you know, the way people uh, grew up in New York and the, the, you know, the life, the life that life that they had, you know, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm from West end of Toronto, you know, like, uh, you know, this, my neighborhood's not exactly, uh, you know, Disneyland either, but it, I was like, this is, this is far from Queensbridge projects, right, like right. understand the difference, you know? So that's what hip hop really taught me about, you know? So I, I feel like, yeah, like it definitely helped to Skelta mob deep, you know, and, uh, you know, J Ruta damager, uh, when I, when I heard wrath of the math, wrath of math, like, right. um, I was like, you know, just as uh, I use super scientific powers, you know, and like the way that he would drop so much knowledge, but at the same time, like 
you know, like they said, he's this, he's this dread dude just like standing on top. He's on rooftops, just kind of like preaching all this like knowledge and science. But like, you know, he's like he's hardcore as well. Like, you know, like uh, can't stop the prophet. You know, it's just like uh, just songs like that. Just constantly like, oh, they always come back to me. So it's really hard to just say like one guy. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah, I, awesome. any of those guys I mentioned, you know, they definitely and there's probably a bunch that I'm forgetting as well. But. Big on the East Coast, though, right? Yeah, big on the East Coast. And everybody would always say to me, they'd be like, yo, uh, you, you got that, you kind of got this West Coast sound to you, you know? Like, you know, you, you ever listen to West Coast? Like, or you, you should try, you should try rapping, like, on West Coast beats. Or, like, try sending your music out to some West Coast DJs, because I think that they'd really feel, you know, what you're doing. And I was just like, I don't know, because I listen to East Coast, you know? I listen to East Coast hip-hop, and I'm like... And I'm like, I don't really know if I want to go down that route. Like, my favorite West Coast was all of the Ice Cube stuff that was, like, uh, that Chuck D helped produce, you know? Like, uh, America KKK's Most Wanted. Yeah. Anything with, like, the public enemy vibe. And I was Bomb like... Bomb Squad production, basically? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, not sure. Probably, like, yeah, you know? Right, yeah, yeah, that's after the he come over after that. Yeah. Yeah, I like I said... That Bomb Squad sound is just... And that's the thing. Like, everybody's like, you know... I, 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 I never claim to be a hip-hop historian, especially the life that I've had. I'm like, you know what? Sometimes everything gets jumbled in. So you just get me going like blah, 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 blah. And you hear like, okay, this, okay, this, okay, that. But, you know, like I've always just been in the moment of like, you know, of the experience. And so like people are like, well, what's, well, this was this name. Well, what year was that? And I'm like, couldn't yeah, tell you. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? It's been, it's been a lifelong uh, trip and I'm like, I'm still, I'm still loving it. I uh, I want to ask you a question. That I think I don't get to ask a whole lot of people. Uh, what was the first time you were on? You had anything on Much Music? First time was a video called Dear Dad that I did with uh, the group Angerville, Angerville that yeah, I was yeah. in. And uh, yeah, basically, did that song hit number one on like Rap City or whatever? Like that song, we got charted heavy. heavy rotation, right? And like uh, like I said, like it was uh, the first time Classified ever hit me up, and probably like I I don't think I, we've even spoken since, and we played baseball like randomly last thanksgiving and um because we have mutual friends special k but yeah he hit me up and he's like yo your video is playing more than mine on much music <laughs> and i'm like oh i'm like that's crazy but i didn't know if it was we didn't we didn't know anything we had no no we didn't have a manager we didn't have a publicist we didn't have we didn't have anything we were recording in the basement and this guy sharpshooter he was on hip-hop canada and he was like i'm gonna give away a free video you send me the song and I'll shoot it for you. So yeah. Bishop Brigante ended up winning it um, for a track that he had. I forget what it's called, but the whole video was in reverse and it was crazy. And um, and so we hit him up afterwards and we're like, you know, uh, we're wondering what you, we, we understand we didn't win, but we're wondering what you thought of the track. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. He's like, I'd still shoot it for you. And he's like, and I'll give you a sweet deal on it, you know, but you, you're going to be responsible for everything. You know, I'm going to write this treatment and you guys, and it was, a, I think he expected us to fail because there was so many moving parts. Like we had to get like almost like 50 actors just to do it for free. Right. Cause we had no budget or anything. So mm. we called in favors. We had some of the King of the dot guys come in, you know, people should go check that video out because yeah. like what year was that video made? What year are we talking here? I think 2008. It's like, it's, it took a lot. You can tell. There's so many people in that video. Yeah, every single well, and like, you do so many like flashback stuff, and in like it's every single scene has like a different character in it, right? And yeah. being played by a different actor. So everybody's like my uh, my mom's boyfriend was in it. Like uh, people's like uh, babysitters were in it. Like it was just like whoever we could find <laughs> to get in it was in it, you know. And that was it. Like we were like. So we called in favors for everybody, you know, and like we had people, we borrowed people's cars and stuff like that. And we had like, you know, we got cheap props or whatever we had to do. But yeah, in the end, what it was, you know, uh, my boy that, uh, that I used to rap with, it was a song that he had dedicated, he had written to his father. He thought his father was going to pass away. So yeah. he like, because his father got cancer and he wanted to, uh, he wanted to have some, you know, uh, some way of like giving him a letter just to let him know about everything that he had taught him and, and everything he thought. And, I, and he had it on like on some dub track, right? Like it was just an industry beat. And I said, dude, you, you need, we need to make more out of this, you know? So we worked on a hook together and then I added a third verse about my father, you know, and I was, you know, me and my father's relationship is a bit better now, but I wasn't really tight with my dad, but I'm like, you know what? I got to try my best to write at least one verse about my pops, really? you know? Yeah. yeah. So like, oh, it's really? like to fit in with the theme of the song, of right? Course. 
I, I mean, I would have been. That's the interesting thing because, like, you know, listening to the track, it's you know, you don't get that impression at all because you were great at you know writing it and I've, performing it. But that's interesting to find out that at the time you're writing, it's sort yeah. of a strange thing. So that was our first time on much music, and I was like, you know, I was extremely uh, surprised by the way it turned out. Like this is back in the day, so we had to get like our we had to get our uh, beta tapes. You know, we like it was yeah. no like digital like you didn't submit it online yeah, right, or whatever, right, right? right? Like so, and we had to get like our closed captioning and our beta tapes and then literally like we you know some of the guys that we worked for like in, you know landscaping or you know whatever business uh, who had who had friends because their the, our bosses had money who knew people who were like on this board so we're like all right put his name on it put his name on it we just wrote like every single influential person's name that we could think of on this brown envelope and shoved it in the in the mailbox uh, at much music headquarters on queen street and we just shoved it in there <laughs> and sure enough like it one or two out. weeks later it's like somebody's like dude you like you're, you're famous <laughs> you guys are famous <laughs> like it's just playing all the time and not just like there was no like m like this is when much music still showed videos like all day right yeah. like it wasn't like the, oh you're on much vibe or whatever yeah. like you know like no it was like it was all the time so people were like you know on the subway coming up to us and stuff and it was like Wow, so like we made a splash right off the bat, but we were not prepared for anything. Like we had no idea how the music business worked, or or any type of you know background, or whatever. Right. Like Didn't so, know how you're gonna follow? We it had up, no like, idea. No, no, there was no follow up. This was like a mixtape track. We had it on like one of those skinny CDs. It was <laughs> as they sold. It was like ten bucks that played a record. We sold it on consignment. You know, like it's like <laughs> so. But yeah, we lucked out. We got lucky, and then we got like three, three or four more after that, just off of the buzz. And then, you know, eventually, much music changed. You know, Moses Neimer left, and uh, and the format was more, you know, reality based television, and uh, yeah. it became less of a, you know, yeah. and the internet, you know, so, for sure. You know. Did you guys score much fact for the ones after that? No, we no? we never got. We've never we never got any much fact, and no. it was just like because we didn't know what we were doing. If we would have had like any type of idea of how like how to do it mm. we, we probably could have taken advantage of that but we're just like no nah, man just like yo how much money you got i got some cash here like look, let's let's get some money together call up sharpshooter let's do it again you know and sharpshooter like you know he he was he didn't really want to do music videos for the long term anyways he wanted to be like a, a big movie producer right. in la which is eventually what he did but it's you know now he does movies with like Vivica Fox and like Michael Madsen and people like that. Mm. He does movies down there in, in L.A. and stuff, and it's like, but it's funny because you can see his progression through you know the early rap videos that he that he shot here. In, yeah, in, he was getting his feet wet. Yeah, yeah. But now he's you know he's he's doing big things, so good for him. It's good, dude. What up, Nadim? Um, I wanted to ask you some questions. Like, how'd you get the name Fortunato? Because it's a quite a you know it's quite a name, right? It's interesting. Can yeah, I get a, a just sure. little uh, like, taste of that, James? Yeah, here. This is. I think that's the one you were using. Earlier, yep, that's right that's cool. Just, just slide it right down. Let's see if we can get it. There. Oh, oh this is not a curling oh, show. Not a curling oh, yeah, show. Not a curling it's show. Canadian rap. So while you girl. while you pour that, I wanted to talk about a couple of people. Like I was researching you, and I got a little off track. Uh, and um, there's a Saint Fortunato. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. And there's a Fortunato yacht that I think you should own. It's a 205 foot mega yacht. It's called the Fortunato. Look it up. It looks dope. Uh, what else we got? Have you ever heard of Don Fortunato? Uh, isn't he's like a notorious rat? Didn't he like rat out a bunch of mob bosses or something? No, he's a Marvel Comics villain. Really? I had never heard of this person. Have you ever heard of Don this Fortunato? Don Fortunato. It's a hard name though. It's a hard name. Real for hard. Is Don Fortunato? Yeah, no. Don Fortunato. The, cra the crazy thing is I used to read Throw these. that in your name, man. How did you Don pick Fortunato? that name out of all Don the, you know? Fortunato. Well, like, it was, there was, we used to, like, read these kind of, like, fantasy novels back in the day, like, uh, Dragon Lance and all these, like, uh, shot, you know, we kind of got into, I was into role-playing games, like, back in the day, like, Dungeons and Dragons and shit, back in, yeah. like, back when I was in, like, grade seven and, and stuff like that, and, um. There was this one book that I kind of happened upon called Wild Cards, and uh, there was it was a there was a character in it who was a he was a pimp, and um, he uh, used tantric uh, sex to like develop psychic powers, and eventually he did it so much that like his his brain started to like expand, and so like his he had like this enlarged, 
you know forehead from it but he was like okay. he could do some crazy he could do some crazy like psychic powers and stuff but then like he you know if he didn't do the tantric sex then he would start to lose his powers you know so <laughs> it was i was like yo i was kind of like was this like an anti-masturbation book no, no, like that. Like I said, it's uh, it was, it was just, uh, you know, because you always know, people always say like, you know, this uh, this tantric sex, you know, like I don't know, people do it, whatever. I found the character really interesting, and it wasn't even the sexual side of it. It was like just the way he was a, he was kind of a grimy dude. Like he was always had like, he'd always have like prostitutes around him, but then they would be there like to kind of like make him money, but also help him develop his psychic powers at the same time. So I was just like, yeah, this is not the not what I'm used to reading. Like I went from like <laughs> dragons and like you know knights and wizards and stuff to like this book, and I was like, so you know. But as you know, as I went, I say, okay, Fortunato is a cool name, and uh, and the people's like, oh yeah, that's Italian. And I was like, I'm Italian, so they're like, oh yeah, what's what does it mean? It means oh, it's, Italian, eh? Yeah. And so like basically, <laughs> Fortunato, the fortunate one, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's. That's what I said. Like fortunate, well, blessed, happy, absolutely. Italian, Spanish, Portuguese form of the Latin name Fortunatus, meaning fortunate, blessed, happy. This was the name of several early saints and martyrs. Yeah, I mean, like I, I'm no saint. Um, and uh, Ivy let me have the internet this week. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm going crazy. <laughs> it's uh, you know, like once I found out it meant the fortunate one, I'm like, you know what? This this is like I really am fortunate, and ever since I chose that name, it's like my life steadily got better as I committed to it. And I was like, you know what, I have just been getting more and more fortunate since I became Fortunato. How much do you how much do you think about that in like a conscious way of like embodying things you want? Like heading into this weekend, as mm. we as we sit, sit right before like ECMAs, yeah, like. Do you think about that as performances are right there? Like, okay, here's what I'm not like. Do you visualize? Well, you do know, you picture shit and then step into that. I I know people who use visualization <laughs> techniques. Step into I, shit. That's I like to. Idea. I like to. You know, I believe in like. Uh, you know how people say, "Oh, uh, uh, eleven, eleven, make a wish," right? For, yeah. For yeah. Whatever. So I'm just like, I always, I'm always like, every every time that I look down at my watch and I see it's eleven, eleven, I I say whatever I want to happen. And if I'm in, you know, if I'm in a crowded place, I just kind of say it to myself. I'm like, oh, I hope I win this and this and this. And I, uh, I, I, no, I specifically say, I wish that I get, I wish that this would happen. And I, and I, you know, and this and that. And so, um, yeah, you know, I, 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 that's that's my way of doing it. You know, I like to, uh, I like to wish for things, and uh, you know, I wish, I wish thoroughly and, and steadily, you know. And so, like, if I feel like, you know, like, yeah, with the ECMAs, right? Like, with the nomination, I, 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 really, I really wished for it, like, every day that I could. Every day that I could. And then it happened. And I was like, I wasn't expecting it, you know, because I feel like I never expect anything like, like something like that to happen. You know, I'm just like, you know, I'm used to kind of like getting, like, I am the fortunate one. But at the same time, you know, like... You see, like I have, I have a lot of people that I've worked with in the industry and throughout life who've done like amazing, amazing things, and I'm just like, man, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing good, <laughs> but I've, I'm always wishing that I could do better. So you know, I'm just like, I'm like, you know what, this, this could or could not happen. I'm not gonna get my hopes up, but I wish it would happen. Well, so that's still, it. You still celebrating the struggle, though. Absolutely. You know? Like, there's no, there's, there's no denying yeah, yeah. that. You know, like, I mean, I tell, I tell everybody. You know, come see where I live. You know, like I mean, where I'm at in Toronto, it's it's not a picnic. You know, it's uh, we're not like we're not chilling in a penthouse, and uh, you know we don't have like we don't have like uh, pools with wa infinity pools with waterfalls overlooking. Like I don't get to like just oh I, 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 my dad's from Italy. I'm just gonna go to Italy and you know maybe I'll take the the yacht for a spin or something. You know, like you know yeah. like oh the maybe, 205 foot one. Yeah, no, maybe I like you know it's a so yeah this from humble beginnings always you know when i did the blue collar ep that was a very that's a big part of the blue collar ep you know it was like living in new brunswick and uh, in lz book took you know and then yeah. like you know be, being having to be humble because you know you look around and you're like this is this is where my life is right now this is i'm i'm uh i'm here you know and you can't be like oh yeah no but uh, but you know, I I'm I'm making albums and and I get to go on tour and, and I just went to Europe and stuff like that and it's like yeah I'm very fortunate for that but when it's all said and done 
I still got to go to my little basement apartment in LZ Book Took, you know, and, uh, you know, get buried in snow and like, you know, and then like hey, go j go hop in the beater and like, you know, just hope you don't run out of gas on your way to town and whatever, you know, like little things like that. So, you know, like, yeah, far, far from like blowing up. But right. that's I, I, I you're absolutely right. I celebrate that that uh that grind you know and uh yeah i'm i'm very fortunate but i'm always always wishing for wishing for the best you know so on, on that on that point of like uh, being on the east coast like it had its difficulties obviously but how important do you think it was to like i think this sort of like whole sort of not recreation but like this new wind in your whole like it felt like it was a big creative move like or not move but it, it it fueled a lot of new stuff from you like a a new fire. Yeah, is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. No. Talk to me about what the East Coast has done to you. Like what it what it means to you as an MC. It means everything, you know. Like uh, it's my rebirth, you know. I like uh, I went as far as I could with Toronto, and and you know even being back in Toronto, I realized it's like there's still not much for me there, you know. Other than you know like I mean there is family wise, you know, like as far sure. as my folks and stuff like that. But as far as my music goes, you know, like. Yeah, there's a lot of people I can I can hit up for a music video, whatever like that. But you know, I kind of reached the point in Toronto where I was just like, this is this is kind of run its course, and now I start starting to feel like I'm walking through the desert again, where it's like, the you see the opportunities dry up, and every club like I played at every club in Toronto, and it's like, oh yeah, another show at Nocturne, another like seventeenth show in a row at Nocturne, really, and like who are we opening for this time? <laughs> or you could do it yourself and have like 20 people show up like you know like whatever it's it's was the same it was the same grind you know so i put out i put out a unseen armada while i was in toronto but then i brought it with me out to the east coast it was right. kind of like the cd that i had with me you know right. and people were listening to it like uh the kid jay forbes out in moncton because i was in lc so i was like trying to get to know uh hip-hop artists out there right. and he's like this is my favorite album i'm like you're the first person to say that to me really you know <laughs> and then like it and then you know the ecmas they were just like they're like oh yeah we love it too and i was just like wow people people are feeling this right maybe i should keep going with it but like more than that like the artists that i met after i came here like i did one tour out here because i was exhausted with what i was doing in ontario i did the straight east coast in tour and um and then like i it was i planned that tour completely on my own and i didn't have a lot of help doing it and if it wasn't for the kindness of the people on the east coast saying like yo come to my place come chill you know all those people who helped me out during that tour they ended up being like the the backbone for for what i built out here so right. like you know my homie scrim i was doing a show in uh, middle sackville and uh, you know it, and it was like he just jumped on the mic during during the set we ended up rapping together so impromptu and then i ended up chilling at buddy's house and like years later best friends yeah. making music you know and uh and that's you know and there's so many others as well like the guys coming down for the east coast music Awards. so like it's the friendship it's the and it's the i feel like it's the power of the ocean as well like as the closer i get to Talk it the, to me on that. you know the more i i can, I can feel it as that. soon as i as soon as i get out here you know like uh it's something about it like oh, lake ontario just doesn't just doesn't have the same vibe it, it you know has a power. talk to me about the ocean well like it's I, I, I feel it as soon as like, you know, we, I was just here last month for this. So you think you can rap thing, you know, and as I soon as. That yeah. We, yeah. So like we, uh, you know, we we passed over the border into Nova Scotia and all Do you have sudden, any honeybees in your pocket. Honey, <laughs> honeybees, honeybees. Uh, no, you didn't. I can tell. All no. right. Carry on. So <laughs> people watching will get that. We we uh, we we like we crossed over into Nova Scotia and I was like and I just started to feel like myself smiling and i'm like well what am i smiling for you know it's just you know like but i'm like oh my god this is this is gonna this is gonna be great it's like you just get this feeling this is gonna be great and it's like the same thing like before i came out for this you know like uh, i was in toronto and i was like just going through some pretty miserable you know ordeal uh, a pretty miserable ordeal before i came out here and like up to like 48 hours before i knew i was gonna get on my flight and stuff and to the point when i got to the airport and i went through security and then I knew for sure that I was getting on a plane. To, and then as soon as I got, we took off, 
it's like all my problems just kind of <laughs> went <laughs> and i was like you knew you was on the way right right so but there is definitely like they always say in nova scotia like you're never more than 70 kilometers from the ocean where whichever way you go yeah and yeah it's about that yeah, something yeah. like that it's, they got a saying it's like not that very far right That's so true. i'm just like just me maybe it's being surrounded by it or just being close to it but like i have i have a lot of raps where i touch on that you know and where right. i was living in new brunswick you know on the acadian peninsula you know, like we were on the Rishi Baktu River and then you get to the North Humboldt Strait. And then and then after that, you know, you're, you're just constantly on the right on the edge of the of the continent, you know. Yeah. And so like just being on the edge there, being like like that just past that is just vast ocean. Something about it, you know, like, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I know that my family roots started out here, you know, and then they moved out to, to Vancouver. And so uh, I feel like coming back here, maybe it's bringing it full circle. I can't explain what kind of metaphysical things are going on, but I know I'm very sensitive to like, you know, the way like, you know, the feel. vibe, you know, like if I if I feel like it's like if it's a bad vibe, I'm just be like, no, nah, I'm not feeling it. We, we got to get we got to get out of here. You know, yeah. that's kind of like why I came out here. Right. Do you so, have yeah. similar feeling when you're out west, like when you're on the west coast. When I'm on Vancouver Island, I do. It's Vancouver, not so much. Again. Yeah, Vancouver Island, I do. They last we went on tour out there last summer, me and Doom Squad, and literally, they they had to pull me off that island. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know what, guys, I'm just staying here. I and lived, I, and like, I lived like, in Victoria for like that's four like Kelowna years. for I me. Can relate. That's like Kelowna for me. So yeah. many people love yeah. Kelowna I, like that. I could stay there. Man. The whole place was on fire when I was in Kelowna, so I didn't really feel like. I mean, but people were still loving it there, and I'm just like. But you know, Ugh. it's 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 incredible vibe, California, you know. But I was just like California. I'm what it's like, like man, it's what it's like. Everybody's I guess everybody's got their space, you know, like whatever. Like this is this is my space. And it's like I could just the, from the work that I've done to the people I've met, the relationships I've built and everything and all the success that I've that I've been lucky enough to to achieve out here, I feel like it's all a result of that positive energy, right. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, yo, this one's for all the people who thought I'd never amount to nothing. You were right. I ain't shit, but fuck it. Everybody's gotta be something.